The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at this! He's got it! Ready for a spare! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Washington Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Looks good. That's gonna go. It's a blue. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Once again, we have arrived at Championship Week here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Doug Brown, along with Dan Murphy. Our top two seeds, uh, they rolled five games in the final roll-off, and only five pins separated them. They're going to settle it here for all the money today. Well, if you look at the seeding, uh, that's where it's supposed to end up. The one and two seeds left, I suppose, but uh, there were a lot of people in between that didn't want it to end that way, <laughs> but that's what we got, and it should be a good one. All right, let's meet our top two seeds then. Had a win last week. Our number two seeded bowler is from Stoneham, Massachusetts, and that's Bob Kelly. Bob comes in averaging 124. High single of 210, his roll-off score 696. And last week, a 401 that was triggered by a big 160 opening game in his semifinal victory over Bill Coffold. So Bob goes for two wins in a row today against our number one seed, the only guy to hit 700 in the roll-off from Revere, Massachusetts, Tom Morgan. Okay, and Tommy Morgan comes in uh, as a top seed. His roll-off score is 701. And a terrific score it was, but uh, all those scores don't matter now. As we roll three games to decide the championship here on Stars and Strikes, 500 to the runner-up, $1,000 to the winner, and the winner also, of course, automatically qualifies for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. We have $70 in the bonus ball contest. That'll be at the end of the hour. And, of course, the bowlers can win more money, bonus money as well, from Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. We will describe that for you when we come back to start this championship match. Tom Morgan and Bob Kelly right after these words. The championship match about to get underway. This is the way the bowlers finished in the final roll-off in Nashua. And as you can see, clearly, Dan, uh, Tom Morgan and Bob Kelly uh, just about lapped the field. A 30-pin difference between uh, Bob in second place and Bill in third place. So I guess it's only fitting that these are the two guys remaining. Bob Kelly will start the championship match. And uh, everything on the line here, uh, of course, Tom Morgan has been in the Tournament of Champions before, two years before, in fact. Bob Kelly looking to make his very first appearance in our season-ending event. He could be giving away a lot of cash during this hour. Yeah, a lot at stake. The bonus money opportunities from Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. $25 for three consecutive marks. 25 additional for each additional consecutive mark. $250 for three strikes in a row with an extra 250 for each additional consecutive strike. All brought to us from Emmett Horgan and the gang at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan right on Route 97 Main Street in Salem, New Hampshire. Bob is looking at the seven and the eight. Double piece of wood to the right though. And if there's a way, Bob will find it. Almost look like he'd go with the left hand tip and snap him. That's what he's trying. Not quite. He's sliding in behind the seven. So he'll be open the first two. Not like last week. Last week he opened up with eight marks out of the first ten boxes. And of course, uh, we'll be watching as it is a championship match. Those total scores. Of course, the top seed right now, seemingly pretty safe, is Paul Berger at 454. But you never know. Somebody may be able to top that number. Tom Morgan. Our number one seed. Yeah, both these bowlers certainly had the potential of throwing 450s. But when it's already posted, that's a tough score to yep. catch. Yep. It's entirely possible, but when that when the season is over, that Glenn Shaddock's 439 that he rolled against Paul Berger could end up being the second high triple of the year, but he won't be qualified for the Tournament of Champions. 
Well, you know, I think Paul Berger probably can thank Glenn Shattuck for some of that 454 because he had a great day and he kept the pressure on Paul all day long. Paul couldn't let up. So therefore, uh, I think he helped in that score. 2, 4, 6, and 10 for Tom Morgan. Ooh, that Whoa, close. Oh, too fine cutting that two pin across. I wonder how long we'll be into the match before I call him by his brother's name. Not even mention <laughs> his brother's name because he's here in the audience. I think it'll be sometime in, by the second game. <laughs> Thanks for the confidence. <laughs> there he just cuts it too fine and rocks the six pin, but gets the 10 box. Bob Kelly. Whoa. Oh, yes. First mark of the day. Big strike for Bob Kelly. Kind of blew out the middle of the rack, and then the corners went at the end. One of us will say Mike, I'm sure. Looking for the double. Triangle in the right-hand corner. 6, 9, 10. And let's see where the wood settles down. Could cause a problem. So Bob trying to motion it back. And as hard as Bob throws the pin moves back. I mean, I'd listen to him too. <laughs> Resting against the six pin. Should make a spare a little easier for him. Spare on strike for Bob Kelly. It's interesting, Dan, looking back, of the five bowlers that qualified in this series, the last time that three of them were on with us in singles competition was in the very same series. Back in October of 1993, Bob Kelly, Tom Morgan, and Bill Coffold all qualified in that series in October of 93 and hadn't been with us in singles again until this series. Where do you come up with these stats? I tell you. It's amazing. You are amazing. You keep telling me how amazing you are, and I'm, <laughs> I'm beginning to believe you. <laughs> Tom just sliding by that six pin. And it's a 10, so he's still looking for his first mark, although he hasn't left the pin standing. Bob Kelly jumps out in front by eight after three boxes, but Tommy faces a spare. Well, just the 6-7 with no wood. Looking for his fourth straight 10 box to watch out for the double wood coming out of the channel and shying away from it a little bit, he'll take the nine. So the early advantage for Bob Kelly and he's looking for bonus money here. Off the head pin, takes seven. And the one, two, and seven pins left and this for $25, got a piece of wood in behind the two pin, should help him on the seven. First order business, catch the head pin. Got that. But don't Miss. forget the two. <laughs> got the, the one and the seven. Yeah, I got the head pin a little too full and clipped it right off the two. So no bonus money, but an early 16 pin lead for Bob Kelly. Right back in the pocket. Look at that huge strike. Brooklyn hit for the left-hander over into the 1-3. We talked about this last week, and we'll talk about it again, but uh, Bob Kelly, in all his appearances, he hasn't made the Tournament of Champions. And I think it's one quest that he really wants. He wants to participate in that because he's been so close so many times. Tom Morgan's been in it twice, 1992 and 93, and he gets robbed there on the 10 pin. Still looking for his first mark. Let's see what happened with the 10 pin. Oh, the ball went right behind it. A second piece of wood was coming, another piece stopped it, so he's had a string of rough luck right now, not getting that mark. Kind of an unusual uh, chop there. This is the one he'll probably make for his first mark. <laughs> he took out the three, four, five, and seven. That's tough to do, the three, four, five, and seven. Absolutely. You couldn't do it if you wanted to in a million <laughs> tries, probably. 
but it's still six frames without a mark. Pinning well, 58, only left two pins standing, but Bob Kelly is putting the marks up, working on a strike. This time the one-two pocket, a little thin. And look what he has left. The diamond, three, five, six, and nine, and the seven pin, and no wood. Nine box, 90 through seven. Increase the lead to 23, as you can see. A long ways to go, string number one. Oh, there's the same pocket, this time a little fuller, and he carries it for the strike. He turned this ball over a little bit, and, and it broke a little bit more from left to right into that one-two pocket, and there's just no keeping him up when that happens. Tom Morgan looking for his first mark, and he will shoot at the nine pin. <laughs> Thought it might go over. It's only an hour show. That could be rocking till the end of the show. <laughs> Avoid that front one. No, he oh, takes yeah. all of it and right straight back. First mark for Tom Morgan. Tom from Revere, Mass. Tom and his wife Linda have two children, Jamie and Kelly. And uh, Tom and Linda are the owners and operators of Active Play Management Group. Oh, my. Spread eagle on the spare. Or rather, the half Worcester on the spare. Finally gets his first mark, but he only gets two on the fill. Almost converts it. And a nine. Bob Kelly, right through the center on a strike. Looking for the big fill here, but he's got the spread eagle plus the eight in the back. Seven fill and strike. Nine. He's 16 through nine now, 28 pin advantage, but this is a long ways from over, because Tom, Tommy's throwing a decent ball. He made one bad mistake on the fill. Other than that, uh, hasn't been throwing that bad of a ball. Well, here's the 7-10 for a spare. With wood if it hangs around. Looks like it will. All depends on whether he can get something to snap over for the 10 pin. I'll tell you one thing, the wood's gonna fly. <laughs> but not to the right spot. And the 10, 126 for Bob Kelly, and now Tom Morgan for his final two. Tom was a little upset when he came back to the bench the last time. He fired the towel down after hitting that half Worcester on the spare. Yeah, that's his way of trying to psych himself up and a little adrenaline flowing, so he's still throwing a good ball. But he understands he can't spot uh, right. Bob Kelly, uh, you know, 30 or 40 pins and expect to come back. This looks like a sure bet, though. I was going to say, this is kind of the leave you would want to have when you want to get something started. You know, big Phil hit another one, and he's right back with him. Be within a mark, anyways. <laughs> Phil this time kicks out one extra, two extra. It'll be an eight, and let's see where the wood ends up. Now here's another situation where you may want to miss the two pin to the left, clip the wood, spin the wood from behind. I'm worried about that other pin stopping it, though, the other piece of wood. That's what he's trying. Oh. Went a little too far left. Well, the one mark certainly helps. Takes advantage of the two opens that Bob had. A nine box, a 106, so it'll be a 20-pin lead for Bob Kelly after one. 
Still a long way to go in this championship match on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Game two, Tom Morgan. 3-6 and 4-7 in the left-hand corner and no wood. This is what he needs to make, one of these. Oh, yes! Yeah. Oh, as ordered. <laughs> Not only does he need to make it, but if he can make one in the non-conventional way, which he probably didn't think he had a chance of making this, come off the side. Well, he wanted to split the two pins, but he'll take it. And sometimes that's enough to ignite you. Right in the pocket for the fill, eight. Got to be careful of the wood. I'd want to probably want to go off the left piece if I could. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't want to go by both of them. You want to give yourself a chance at making it. And missing both pieces gave you little chance at all of making it. It's 28, though, after two. Getting something up on the board. Bob Kelly with the 20 pin lead. Bob had three strikes in that first game, but only one spare. That's somewhat unusual. Spread eagle now. Nine. That quickly drops the lead to 11. Next Sunday at 12 noon here on the Winds of New England from Park Place Lanes, we will begin our annual mixed doubles tournament. Four weeks of mixed doubles competition. That's always a lot of fun. We get a big kick out of that, and we hope you'll be joining us next Sunday. And on the Sundays to follow. Next Saturday at noon, of course, we'll have another edition of Candlepin Skins for you from the Londonderry Bowling Center. Two nines for Bob Kelly, so the lead cut in half after just two boxes. It's down to 10. Both of these guys, Dan, with a lot of appearances here on Stars and Strikes and a lot of wins. Well, they both have the utmost respect for each other too. They realize that uh, this isn't gonna be an easy match no matter how long it goes. Bob Kelly now with a record in singles competition with us of 13 and nine. Tom Morgan with a record of nine and six. Tom for the oh, spare, boy. gets the deflection. I have to be honest, I didn't see that one. <laughs> he had that pin come back towards him to the three pin. I would have probably took a shot at cutting the three pin over. It's a big mark for Tom. He's had a couple of them. Great shots, and there's the big fill. He'll touch them all. Strike on spare. It's a matter of time before the eight pin toppled over. Strike on spare. And Bob Kelly answers with a strike. Whew. The battle has been <laughs> joined indeed. That's right. That's five marks now for Bob Kelly, Dan. Four of them have been strikes. Oh! Oh, double mercy. strike for Bob Kelly, and we're just going to have to cool things off here for a moment. <laughs> we'll get a look at that second strike for Bob Kelly, heating it up here in the finals on Stars and Strikes, and we'll be back in a minute. Both bowlers with chances for bonus money here as we resume in game two. Tom Morgan has a strike up. And 
Monday he's that close to a double. Almost came back with a double of his own. The six pin. For $25 in bonus money. The first of the day from Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. I have a feeling it may not be the end. No. On the head pin again, and not the greatest leave. It'll all depend on the spin of the wood. Tom is at 85 through 5. The 5, 6, and 10. He's going to play the wood in front of the 5, but he's going to have trouble with the 5. Oh, kept the ball around, but not long enough. And a 9 box. Let's see what happened on that spare attempt. Ball rattling around, but just behind the five and the six. Pins. I think Tom thought he would get more damage with that piece of wood that he capped too. Went to the sidewall and then right into the pit. Never touched anything else. This is on a double strike now. That was a two hundred fifty dollar ball. If he could have thrown another one, but if he can convert this, he'll pick himself up twenty five. Nope. No. Only a seven fill on the second strike. Well, the good news here for Tom Morgan, Dan, is that he has weathered the storm on the double strike, and he's still picked up 13 pins in this game. Still trails by just seven. Bob Kelly still with only one spare, but I dare say he's got a pretty good shot at another one here. Yep. That's spare number two to go with five strikes already. This is fun. This is what it's all about. These guys <laughs> going at it. Two great Canopin bowlers head to head. Five. Championship week. Oh, look out. Look That's got to go. That'll be a strike. Just stripping that eight pin. Looking for the double, and, ooh, wow. I don't think anything came close to touching the five, eight, and nine. Triangle in the back, spare leave. Oh, bad ball. Just lost control of that one. Yeah. So seven on the strike. And there it was. It's a 10 box now, though, 121 through eight. Bob Kelly working on a spare, as you see. And he pulls the half Worcester. Well, each bowl has made similar mistakes on marks now. Let's see if Bob can recover. This is going to be pretty close after this frame. It is indeed. In fact, just seven, or just one, I beg your pardon. After the strike seven for Tom Morgan in the seventh. Well, that was kind of a thin hit on the 1-3 pocket for Bob. Brooklyn side for him, of course. Four, five, seven, eight. Cluster of four pins in the left-hand corner. He's studying the wood. I don't think he can make that wood go. He's gonna have to play the triangle, have some off the wall. Ooh, just missed the four pin is what he was aiming for. So it would appear that he would lose at least one more in count. So we either could be dead even or the lead could change hands and it's going to change hands by a pin. Tom Morgan now leads by one. $500 to the runner up, $1,000 and a spot in the Tournament of Champions to the winner. So much at stake. Oh, okay. Tom carries an extra pin or two, leaving himself another triangle. Not this time. Cut it too fine, went by the eight pin. It's interesting, the 
last box he had the triangle. He ended up converting it by really playing it right through the center. It looked like he hit the object pin full and it carried the triangle. That time he played it the way you're probably supposed to and he missed it. 131 through 9. Good recovery from his 106 opening game. Oh, oh baby. Oh, oh. Wow. I don't know how we're going to slow this one down, but we'll try to take another look at it. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> 141 with two bonus balls to come. A little full that time. Trying to get whatever he can. And did he make it? It'll be a nine for a 150 middle game for Tom Morgan. A high five from Bob Kelly on the way by. And Tom bounces back from a 106 with a 150 for a two game 256. It's that persistency that counts. I said the first game Tom was throwing a decent ball. Just a matter of time before they started breaking. And it's, it's just got to learn not to panic and keep throwing the same ball and pounding your object pins. and. Eventually they go. Well, he made a couple of great spare shots back in the early stages of that game, and that seemed to lift his confidence. He had three strikes after that. And that was a, almost a spectacular spare in itself. Bob Kelly. And Bob for the 10 without the wood on the 310. So it's still a one-pin lead in the match for Tom Morgan, but now Bob faced with that strike nine in the 10th. Well, if you were to throw a spare strike or strike spare, we'd be even. That's correct. Well, it's gonna have to be a spare strike and not an easy one, the one, two, seven, eight, and 10. Without the eight, it's a much, or a little bit easier shot. Not really easy either way, but look at that. Let's see. Gonna have to hit it hard, not hard enough. It looks like it's gonna be a 10 pin advantage now. That will be it, 120 for Bob Kelly, 246 the total, so things have turned around here in game two. It's now Tom Morgan with the lead by 10. One game to decide the championship when we come back on Stars and Strikes. Here are the guys who've already qualified for the seventh annual Tournament of Champions, led by Paul Berger's 454. Jack Quinn, 397. John Plant, 344. Bob Kelly trails by 10 as we start game three. I'd say definitely John Plant's score is in jeopardy. They still have to come up with a decent game to catch Jack Quinn. Bob starts with a spare. That is only his third spare of the match. He has had five strikes, though, including a double strike. I imagine both of these bowlers haven't, haven't really paid much attention to the final scores. Right. They just got to win the match and get into the tournament. 5 fill for Bob Kelly. Four horsemen right plus the nine, uh, eight pin. No wood. Misses the head pin and leaves just the head pin. Ten. This is one of those cases too, Dan, as you said earlier, when the 454 is already sitting there, you really can't even think about that. It's such a great score. You know, if you get there, fine, but you can't really worry too much about that. The only way some of you are thinking about that, if they opened up with a couple pair, of, let's say 160s, and they get a 60-pin lead, well, they can start thinking about right. scores because the match is pretty well decided. Look at this! Oh, Look at this! Red Eagle for oh. a spare for Tom Morgan. Splits the two and a four. Six and ten go out. Come back for the three. Just like the textbook says, it should be done. 
Makes it count, big eight drop, but no luck on the break. And we're gonna have to have that piece of wood checked as uh, it is well out in front between the eight and the 10. And actually, I'm sure Tom would love to be able to shoot at it, but I don't know if it's gonna be in play. I would say it would be out, but uh, sure, Boy, that we'll was a, a look at it. That was a great first ball too, and nothing touched either the eight or the 10. Cheryl Murphy handling the big scoreboard and taking care of the uh, taking care of the wood on the deck for us as well as handling the big scoreboard and getting a round of applause as always. So now Tom to shoot at the 810. Well, hey, you just made the spread eagle. Why not? Yeah, there's only two pins here. <laughs> <laughs> Gave it a ride. Ten. Adds three more to the lead. Bob Kelly. Great pocket hit. Leaves the seven. If this was a basketball game, you'd say, well, whoever has the ball last will win. But <laughs> it's not. Maybe it's the one who throws the last mark. There's a mark for Bob. Spare in the third. Well, I'm sure Bob is happy to see the spares start to go up on the board because you generally can't put a lot of marks together if you're not throwing spares. Well, 7-10. Seems like they make a mark, and then the next one is not impossible, but a real difficult spare leave. But this time with the wood. Bob can make something happen here. Nope. Yeah, he can make a lot happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he played the V, which was the only thing he could yeah. do, and nothing doing. And, and it's an eight. And those pins are important. You want to get something with every ball, if possible. Now, Tom Morgan has got a 13-pin advantage through boxes completed. That's through the second frame. He faces a spare eight right now. Big eight-pin drop, five-eight. And I, no, the wood's going to stay there. I thought that wood was going to come back in front of the five and the eight. For the spare, yes. Matching the spare that Bob Kelly put up in the third. Lead drops to five temporarily. That's not including Tommy's fill. Each ball taking just a little extra time now. Don't want to make any mistakes going down the stretch. Full. Six a little is heavy. the fill. Yep. Two, four, six, ten. No wood. Don't be surprised. Oh. <laughs> He's coming very close to making those cut shots ever since he made that spread eagle. He's got a lot of confidence. He can gain two and count. And that's why I say something with every ball is important. Ten for 54. Six boxes to go. The lead is 13. And we'll be back to finish it out and decide the championship here on Stars and Strikes after these words. All right, here we go, into the stretch. Bob Kelly first. Trailing by 13. Triangle, three, five, six. No. No, oh, that's both ball is missing triangles badly to the right. At one point in this match, early on, Bob Kelly had a 23-pin lead, but that was before Tom Morgan got his first mark. Now it's Tom with the 13-pin advantage. And Bob in the oh. position where he has to put something on the board, and he does right there with a strike in the sixth. What happened to the seven pin? I didn't see anything hit the seven. <laughs> Oh, a piece oh, of wood just clipped it, it from behind. <laughs> the piece of wood was long gone before it actually fell. 
Well, so he puts a mark up in one of his two boxes. And Tom, Tom has a Tom and a strike. Wow. You hit one out of the park, then I'll hit one out of the park. Of course, a double here would put him in a pretty strong position going to the final four. It's not going to be a double. Not wow. Mr. Left. Well, it's less critical on a strike, of course, because he can still make up some pins here. And he ends up with Whoa. a nine fill. I think not bad, would, all things that, considered. Sure, with that ball, I think Tom was very fortunate, and he would probably agree that I'll take nine on the ball that I just threw. The five pin for the ten now. Well, that makes this next ball very, very important for Bob Kelly. He is working on a strike. And if he were to put another mark up, he would keep the lead right down around 10. So he misses the head pin on his strike as well. One, two, seven, also the six, nine, and 10. Oh, oh, great effort. Great effort. He'll take the nine fill in the strike. Which leaves the lead at 13, which is where it's seemingly been for this entire game. And the all-important eighth frame. Give your opponent something to think about, but set yourself up for the final two. Well, it's going to have to be a good one, the two, four, and ten. I think Bob was worried about the spread eagle when he threw that ball. I think he thought it was going to be f more full than it was. The 2, 4, and 10, and where will the wood end up? Neither Bowler Dan has been able to put two marks together in this game. Well, he might want to cap the wood in, take the piece of the two pin. No, he's trying to split them. Tough shot either way. And it doesn't look like it would have gone anyways, but two open frames for Tom Morgan to work on, leading by 13. Well, one mark in either of these boxes would probably put Bob Kelly in a double strike situation. Tom misses the head pin. Bull is trying to land that knockout punch, and it was a big miss to the left by Tom. Four horsemen, still a makeable shot. Oh, oh yes. yes, big spare. That's four marks in a row on lane 32 for Tom Morgan in this game. But he has yet to find the mark on lane 31, which is where he is right now. Still though, that's a big mark right there. And straight through the center again. It's a big, but it wasn't huge because of that five fill. Let's see, now you got to work on getting the 9 or 10 box, make that spare count. It's an 8, so going to the final 2 now, the lead is 18 for Tom Morgan. So Bob Kelly's got to figure 2 marks anyway and then, then hope. hope for the best from there. He'd love a strike. Oh, but wow. he would not like that. Well, without converting this, he'll have to throw a double strike just to have a chance. Well, it's going to take a big final box now for Bob Kelly. I am surprised that there has been no further bonus money in this match. <laughs> Just the $25 for Tom Morgan in game two. Of course, Bob Kelly had the double strike in game two. But wasn't able to convert. And now he's shooting at the 2-7. And Tom Morgan has already passed John Plant. He's at 362. And would need two more marks to catch Jack Quinn. 
Bob Kelly adds the spare in the tenth, but that is only going to improve his final score because even if he were to put a strike up here, Tom Morgan would le need less than ten pins in order to win the match. Tom needs 141 to tie Jack Quinn, 142 to pass him. Eight fill for Bob Kelly, 123. Make it a nine fill, 124. And a three game total of 370 for Bob Kelly, which will not be good enough on this day. Tom Morgan will be our champion. Actually, Tom needs some strikes. Oh, oh there's, there's the strike. So he still has a chance to catch John, uh, Jack Quinn. I said a couple marks, but uh, after I looked at it, he needs a double strike. Right. Well, he's halfway home. Halfway home is right. With a chance? No. If he were to make this and then throw a strike on top of it, it would be 396. I take it back, it'd be three. No, he still has a chance to catch him, doesn't he? He does still have a chance to catch him. And there it is! Spare on strike! That puts him at 392. So a six or better, gives Tom the second seed as of the moment. So he didn't need the double strike. Well, I, I was right the first time. Yeah. I guess being able to add is not a prerequisite for this job. <laughs> Otherwise, I've been gone in week number two, <laughs> 10 years ago. <laughs> oh, and he doesn't get it. A five fill, a 141, and guess what? We're gonna have a tie at that second spot, 397. That, of course, is settled by the high game. We'll look at that during the break and tell you who is right now the number two seed. But Tom Morgan is into the Tournament of Champions, and we'll be back in a minute. Welcome back to Park Place Lanes. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy and the championship match in the books. Well, the last series we had Paul Berger win four in a row. Nothing like that this time. No, no one could win two in a row this time. And number one and two seeds. And what a great match. What a great uh, great match between two great cannel pin bowlers. All right, let's talk to both of them. First of all, a round of applause for Bob Kelly. Come on up, Bob. We have a... Uh a check for $500, which I know isn't the check you wanted, but uh, you can get another one of uh, another check, you know, later in the year. Still uh, two opportunities to come back. Uh, not the big start this time, and, of course, Tom keeps coming right back on you. I, I know Tom won the 105. If he wasn't going to stay down. <laughs> it's just a matter of time before he get out of it. But the uh, last couple of times I come in here with number one seed, no luck, so maybe I try coming out of the two seeds. Still the same thing, so we've got to try another strategy here. Well, I'm sure we're going to see you again sometime soon, hopefully before the end of the year. Thanks, okay. Bob. Congratulations. And uh, now Tom Morgan for the bonus ball on lane 31. And uh, this will be worth $70 if we get a match. Do you think pressure? The pressure isn't making the Tournament of Champions. This is the pressure right here. You don't want to throw like a one or a two, like Bob did last week. There it is, yeah. I don't want to throw a 10 either. <laughs> oh, so we're looking for a 10, and it's not a match for Mrs. Winifred Schmidt from Lunenburg, Massachusetts, down in the central part of the state, where we have a lot of loyal viewers. Hello to all of you down there, and uh, Mrs. Schmidt's guess was a seven, so we'll be sending her a consolation gift, and that means it goes up to $80 next week. But right now we have a check for $1,000 nice. for Mr. Tom Morgan with the uh, come-from-behind win this time. As, uh, it took a little while to get going, but as Dan mentioned, you were throwing a good ball. It was just a question of when things would go for you. Yeah, I felt like I was throwing a pretty good ball the first six boxes. Mm -hmm. I finally got my first mark. I get a little excited and overthrow the thing and punch out two. <laughs> so that's why I got a little upset that time. If you hadn't had pin six in a row and all of a sudden I said, good, I got a mark. No, I really threw that ball way too hard. That's what this game does. But then it started mixing for me. You know, Bobby ran into the middle a lot. So it was back and forth. And now I just we, got lucky. Now we should follow up. Uh, we mentioned you ended up tied for the second seed with Jack Quinn with that 397. But 
by the tiebreaker rule, the high game in the triple determines the tiebreaker. Tom had a 150. Jack's high game was 140. So you probably knew that. You knew you only oh, needed five. I needed five for the push. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's it. it. I got just what I needed. No, <laughs> Jack's a good friend of mine, good bowler, and uh, I'm sure we'll see him there. Well, you're in. That's the big thing. We'll, we'll see you in the tournament, Tom. Thank you very much. Dan, All right. Lot, Tom. Tom Morgan with the 397. And here's the way it shapes up now for the Tournament of Champions. We still have two spots open, of course, but four bowlers are in. Paul Berger with the big 454, of course. Tom Morgan by the tiebreaker, now in second spot, ahead of Jack Quinn, both with 397. And John Plant also in with that 344. Two spots still remaining. Two spots. Still got time for me and you, Doug. Uh, I don't know if there's enough time for that. Well, it's time for me. I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't want to go up against these guys anyways. Okay. Well, also, we should mention that before uh, we get back to the business of finding qualifiers for the Tournament of Champions, next week we will begin our annual mixed doubles tournament for four weeks. Yes, sir, and that's, uh, that's a lot of fun. We've got the uh, women and the men is teaming up in the Scotch doubles format. A lot of fun, and uh, it'll be exciting. So a reminder, next weekend, Saturday at noon from Londonderry, it'll be Candlepin Skins. Sunday at noon, we'll have mixed doubles here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, I'm Doug Brown. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the week, everybody.